Hi everyone, the Lone Wolf here and welcome back to EVE Talk, your weekly look at the market in EVE Online and it finally came a news article. I think a lot of us have been waiting for, for uh, weeks, if not month, months at this point, uh, that gave us some information as to what CCP is planning for EVE Online next. And well, to me at least, it is a little bit of a surprise. An industry overhaul is coming that is going to uh, drastically change uh, the uh, production cycles for ships. And uh, the larger you go, so for battleships, for instance, um, you know, you're going to need uh, different sources of materials than just to take one minerals. And then on top of that, Navy, faction stuff uh, also will require special uh, items gas is coming into play wormhole space is coming into play pi is coming into play moon goo is coming into play uh, and so once you get to the super capitals titans and things like that it is going to be horrendously complex and completely interdependent which i do think is part of the goal here so that you can't just sit in one pocket of space let's say in nullsec and then just uh, you know pump out an endless stream of uh, of uh, capitals and super capitals of the biggest ships in eve online no if you want to do that you will have to uh, interact with players that go into wormhole space uh, players that do pi players that uh, have moons running all of that stuff uh, will now come into play for uh, for the construction of the largest ships in EVE Online. I think it's pretty interesting. Um, it is continuing on that trend uh, to uh, push us away from self-reliance and to basically uh, try, uh, I think, to uh, incentivize commerce, incentivize transportation, uh, trade and all of that stuff. It's all part of the sandbox, of course, which I think is quite okay. Uh, you'll still have trade hubs where you'll be able to just buy everything. Uh, potentially of course it's all going to become a little bit more expensive as we'll need to do even more moving of the stuff that we uh, find oh and even exploration is coming into play if i'm not mistaken i read that uh, data sites will then have a drop that will be needed for some of those production cycles it's crazy it's a very big overhaul and ccp also explained in the dev blog that um it's going to be the, the foundation, the basis for uh, the dynamic resource uh, system that they're planning for the game. So uh, I'm very, very curious. Uh, I think that's like the main topic that could have an impact on uh, this Eve talk here or look at the market. Uh, there's a couple of other things announced, like potentially, which is actually what we're going to check for the extra product. Nurse to the Rokal and the Orca. That's at least how I'm reading it. I think a lot of other uh, viewers agree. Kind of sad uh, that the uh, this could happen to the orca i think it's actually in a, a good spot um the real uh, the real reward for getting into the orca is not like massive yields or anything like that it is a capital ship a base of operation more hp harder to gank but it's definitely also uh you know uh, for mining itself a bit of a solo platform uh, through its um through its uh, drone mining with potentially you can boost other players on top of that i don't think it's a bad uh, end game goal for high uh, but we will see of course what ccp actually decides to do uh, i think everyone does agree that uh, the Rorcal basically being by far the best mining ship and boosting ship in the game although restricted to uh, low null uh, to dangerous space um you know it's it's a bit of a problem uh, it's uh, one of the causes for the uh, the needs for the resource crunch that we have gone through over the last year or so so a uh, very very big article made an extra video on that and we should also get a live stream on monday from ccp where perhaps we'll find some more information but for now i think the games are on bets are made and uh, you know uh, to um to, uh, to take a quote from a movie that I really like called Margin Call, uh, there's a lot of money to be made coming out of this mess. We need the brightest <laughs> minds uh, to get on this. So all of you guys, yeah, get, uh, get on the starting line. And I think speculation will be abound uh, in, uh, in the market at this point. Now, before we go and take a look at that one, quick look at the new Eden store to see what's happening over here. So we've got a bundle set front and center, I'm not spotting anything special. Uh, and then on the services, we don't have anything special happening here either. We do have a sale on Omega Time that is happening, was happening. I'm not exactly sure what the period was, uh, but uh, so that will probably have a little bit of an impact on the Plex market. So that's a good segue, let's dive into the market with plex and stuff and that's coming in at five minutes 
0500 like that and yeah let's get started here is a plex itself um as always we'll try to start with the chart here and average prices have actually bounced off of the 2.2 million mark over the last couple of days but you can clearly see that uh, the trend has been down and here a first sign that perhaps uh, a bottom is trying to be formed five day moving average definitely taking uh, a different direction all of a sudden in a more serious way i would say than over here and over here so perhaps the market decides on 2.2 million i do think that there's a lot that's coming into play now with CCP's announcement and it, it, it is sort of what I uh, was talking about I think last week or two weeks ago when it comes to that uh, Plex bottom around FanFest and the anniversary of uh, EVE Online. It doesn't happen every single year but I have seen it happen quite a few times uh, and uh, in, a, in a pretty sustained way and so here what could really be happening is yeah we got our first announcement uh, we're very close to April big changes coming in April then we will have uh, the anniversary for EVE Online itself that usually comes with events gifts things like that and all of that does tend to uh, draw in the players I think they can maybe also come out with um, with a trailer, build some hype, do some do some cool stuff that way uh, that could slowly start to form the bottom. But keep one thing in mind. This is a rush down. You can also see the volumes uh, that have gone up. This is also the Omega sale uh, that is showing in uh, on, on this Plex market. And what you have to uh, take the gamble on, I would say, is of course, will CCP make stuff uh, so that players want to have Plex, want to have like a free uh, running Omega or something like that? or will they be running sales in that period that could further depress the price. So it is still a little bit of a gamble, but looking at this chart, of course, we can see the potential upswing could be very big. 2.2 million and a little bit of a first bounce. Very, very interesting. Now, 2.3 million for the sellers, just below 2.2 million for the buyers. That's in Jita itself. And we are basically in the same region for the Tranquility Trading Tower or the player-owned hubs. And we just close the gap, but we don't go above 2.2 million for the buyers of Plex. So still very cheap. Uh, we also saw from the economic numbers that over the last month in February, uh, based of the last month that we got numbers from, uh, deflation was a reality, not true player activity. Um, so a deflation, you know, as understood of a, a shrinking of the uh, amount of currency in the game. So not due to player actions because uh, we still created more ISK than we sank away uh, in the uh, in the sinks. Yeah, in, in the ISK things, uh, but uh, because of well less activity, perhaps bannings, perhaps the fight against bots, uh, overall uh, we actually ended the month uh, of February with less ISK in the game than we started it. And so that is of course that deflationary pressure that is starting to uh, push through. On the other hand, CCP has also announced that they're planning to up the rewards for ratting in Nozick as well. So uh, that, uh, that faucet may be opening up again and another sign that maybe a bottom is forming and that um, you could consider perhaps like a 5% or so if you, there's ISK that you don't need in your wallet uh, I would say you, you could consider like maybe like a 5% 10% to slowly start to uh, move that towards Plex in my opinion this is an opinion this is definitely not advice or anything like that it's speculation for sure Next up, multiple pilot train certificates, same chart also, right, hesitating, we did go below 1.2 billion, touched 115 on a couple of days and now here there's this, yeah, do we want to go lower, yes or no, market is not really sure, 1.2 billion for the sellers and just above 1.1 billion for the buyer. Still a decent uh, gap that's opening up here uh, as we have our first little uptick in a while, which is also pretty interesting to see that, well, the, the sellers, well, I'm not just gonna keep dumping and keep going lower and lower, but the buyers, hey, let's try and pull it lower. <laughs> so that is this fight that's happening. It's actually opening up a little bit of margin between sellers and buyers. The skill extractors next, uh, very same pattern. This one, you know, I do think it's basically dependent on Plex, right? It's the Plex barrier at 2.2 million 
that uh, is causing the resistance and the skill extractors are basically following that which is why we for instance don't touch 250 million uh, on on this downswing and on this uh, recovery over the last couple of days well recovery that's maybe a lot said 260 million for the sellers 245 for the buyers also again a little bit of margin opening up between those two the impact on the injectors next here are the large scale injectors and well i must say ccp is still very very generous of course with sp so that interest is not um coming back just yet look at that decrease right here uh, continuing to slowly edge down towards 600 million we broke through the 630 mark without too much resistance in fact 620 as well now 619 for the sellers and below 600 million for the buyers on this trend right now and we still have decent volumes as well i would say it is possible to buy a large scale injector below 600 million at this point and that is another one well you have to make a decision do you think that this plex uh, change here will eventually also mean an end to the decline for the large scale injectors then perhaps starting your investment uh, could be a good idea uh, i've always said it i personally like these skill injectors uh, myself because they have this two-part um, uh, two parts uh, that uh, that consist uh, of, of these large scale injectors number one is basically plex that become an extractor and so that is like a hedge against inflation uh, which there is not at the moment of course i'm sure but uh, i do think it's going to come back and then the other one is speculation on um, new stuff coming to the game more skill points being needed and players really rushing to an interesting set requiring those large skill injectors or just you know not having the patience and that's that speculation on top of uh, that uh, that protection against inflation that do make these very unique items at a higher cost of course you do have to invest um, like 600 million is in order to uh, to have a single unit which is uh, of course quite a bigger barrier than just plex itself for these small scale injectors also continuing and a pretty rapid decline going through 130 124 now for the sellers and 118 below 120 for the buyers so very very interesting times here as well another one year low point for the injectors and we see that first little hesitation in the plex market um, yeah make your bets i would say this is uh, an interesting time i would say considering as well uh, that ccp just came out with this news the anniversary is coming uh, but then after that we've got summertime which could be bad for the game uh, you know historically especially if then players or, or uh, in real life uh, people uh, start to uh, you know get back into normal life i'm not really sure what it's like for the vaccines and things like that in your country uh, in ours i don't expect a great summer to be honest this is belgium after all uh, but uh, perhaps in other countries uh, i know that in the us for instance uh, the, at least the vaccination uh, rate is incre is incredible compared to ours so maybe there they could normalize and that would see uh, normally a lower activity in eve online which could be bad for plex price it's it's a very difficult equation i fully admit that after that we've got the uh, daily alpha injector that is back at 40 million you know around a normal average price pretty impressive to see after that pretty sharp decline here over the course of a month from 45 all the way down to almost 35 on a single day um, so that recovery back to 41 for the sellers 38 for the buyers puts it in i think a pretty good spot despite all the pressure that we're seeing here for the other injectors these daily alpha injectors obviously are still uh, very popular and i would say uh, you know i repeat it almost every time but that 40 million mark seems to be a very good goal even for an alpha player something that's manageable uh, with a little bit of luck in exploration for instance all right i earned myself an alpha injector let's uh, buy it in inject it into my character go back out there and try to uh, take those those jumps uh, ahead of someone that doesn't use them uh, in a way that is doable compare that to 600 million of course quite a bit harder to uh, achieve for an alpha player and then finally we've got the hyper course that are well continuing the decline but also hesitating at the tail end uh, i do think yeah the market is not sure if uh, or for how long the deflationary cycle will continue 244,000 for the sellers 230 for the buyers one year low point that is absolutely true next up we have the minerals coming in at 1430 
Um, so here, of course, the announcement is pretty big. Now, I haven't gone through the numbers just yet. It's uh, a lot to do. I have been trying to read some of the uh, posts on the subreddit about this. And so from what I've heard, Tritanium could take a big hit because uh, the requirements for Tritanium have basically gone down in most ships, I think, especially in the bigger ships. Uh, it, it's a, a pretty big reduction. But uh, Isogen and Pyrite are supposed to be up in uh, the requirements by quite a lot. So that's interesting, <laughs> especially for Isogen, where uh, I also got a um, uh, someone mentioning in the comments from last Eve talk that the big sell order is gone. So let's let's just get started. Let's take a look at what's happening in the mineral market next. Uh, I wrote it down 14:30. Yeah. Uh, so Tritanium is uh, still. Um, below 6 is on the chart, but you can see that we're actually edging up. That's a little bit of a surprise. And if we go into GTA itself, 623 for the sellers, but 571 for the buyers. So that's very interesting. Uh, availability here, just one seller of 100 million. That looks to be down a little bit. Um, and as a result, we have gone up in price. But those buyers are probably the ones looking at the uh, dev block and they're saying we're not gonna rush into crazy six and over tritanium since the needs for tritanium should go down coming next month and so here we actually have a big margin that's opening up between sellers and buyers and uh, that does make for an interesting situation for the average price to still be here that means that dumping to these buyers is definitely happening at the moment as well so tritanium should see some pressure in the long run um, and we may have to accept that rather than six is perhaps five five point five could become the new normal considering that well for instance for supers uh, for really big ships you need you'll need a lot less tritanium in order to build them um, not really sure why ccp decide on that i think it's the one mineral that ha was back to its its normal average price where the players had quickly adapted and uh, have been able to to get back into a normal uh, rate but perhaps what's also possible of course um, is that uh, they look at the volumes, the amounts being mined, and high sick uh, is by far the biggest amount. And maybe they want to rebalance that a little bit by reducing the need for tritanium, but upping, for instance, isogen, uh, so that you're forced a little bit more into low sick, and uh, being able to do that without necessarily causing even more price uh, increases in the mineral price index itself which is now up to really record levels so tritanium is down that should have a pretty big impact uh, or tritanium i'm expecting that to go down it should have a pretty big impact in general next up we've got a pyrite let's take a look at that all right slight move up in fact uh, average here for today it seems to be above 20 so we are talking <laughs> sell prices of 100 isk by prices of 20 isk um if i look at around us no nope, that's you know there's 40 isk here a little bit in tranquility trading tower it's just a couple units so this is super interesting to me personally it's the exact reverse here we have the buyers that are saying uh, 20 isk for uh, pyrites seems like a good price to me i mean come on guys just sell it to us and then it, now it's the sellers that are looking at the announcement and are saying pyrite needs going up through the roof uh, i'm not selling that for nothing <laughs> i need 100 isk <laughs> for my pyrite that should become a pretty interesting chart looking uh, at the next week to see who is winning out basically right now average price is still close to 20 and uh, that uh, should mean that there is still some selling happening to these buyers it may not be uh, a completely crazy situation just yet but know where this is going uh, next week ought to be pretty interesting on the chart as well after that we've got Mexalon that is flat in all of the comments that I've read so far, I didn't really notice anything when it comes to a uh, max loan. So I'm going to say that here the market or the analysis is that generally we're in the same spot. 126 for the sellers, 122 for the buyers. Look at that narrow margin between these two. Hardly a move on this one. I, I'm guessing that it's basically not been in the crosshairs after the announcements. And as a result, it's still in my opinion, at a really, really good price uh, for uh, for Mexlon. Historically, I'm gonna put the average at around 75, so we're still paying that uh, that big premium, or miners are getting that big premium for grabbing Mexlon. Potentially, of course, this week, 
Uh, I would look for pyrite sources considering what's happening here in Isaac. But yeah, Mixalon pyrite will uh, be the more exotic Isaac minerals that you want to hunt for. And Tritanium, that's quite plentiful through Veldspar, is probably going to go down a little bit in importance. After that, we've got Isogen. And well, here we go. We do have today's data point being at 60 isk. So I'm expecting something similar to pyrite where indeed the sellers uh, are looking at the announcement and are saying, well, 70 is something like that. There is the jump up that we've been waiting for. Now we do see 250 million units coming in at 75. And let's not keep in uh, that, uh, you know, let's not forget that 2 billion units that uh, was there and still exists in the game, obviously. So uh, I do think that uh, that will be unloaded slowly. Could be these 250 million right here. But uh, this shows that, yeah, that patience will probably be paying off it is not just the stocks depleting now that's going to push up isogen but also a ccp intervention increasing the needs of isogen in the general economy 55 for the buyers let's take a look at that that's up as well uh, right here so uh, another big move that that could have momentum uh, in the upcoming days and weeks ought to be pretty interesting after that we have the noxium market almost 1500 here for the sellers let's take a look at that plateauing at a one-year high point 1500 for the sellers 1400 for the buyers very expensive also one that i know i haven't really seen mentioned in the comments just yet so i don't expect too much change there uh, but i think if we then uh, take a look at here isogen and noxium right ccp wants to incentivize uh, uh you know going into low sec and making us more interdependent that means that uh, yeah try it's all coming at a cost basically of tritanium now they're not there's no real need i don't think to up noxium usage it's already at a crazy price but isogen there was still room for that and so that's exactly what he announced pyrite perhaps as well that's relative honestly i don't think that the 20 is pyrite is that uncommon a price considering the history but of course if you're going to push down tritanium usage and does the the average price god damn it for this one for tritanium as well um, I guess uh, if you want to keep the mineral mix in, in a certain spot, you may want to up the price for pyrite, which is exactly what they're doing there as well. So yeah, Noxium still at that very high point. And then we've got Zydrine that's continuing its uh, climb as well. 1900 almost for the sellers of Zydrine, 1825 for the first buyer. Uh, dropping down to 1575 very quickly. So perhaps a gap starting to open up here, but uh, one year high point super Super expensive of course and then we've got mega site you may already have seen that from the ticker but slide up swing it's basically just a daily variation i'm a little bit surprised by that but yeah 643 for the seller 600 for the buyers this is really the counterweight i'm going to say to zydrine at 2k almost that's very expensive noxium 1500 that's very expensive as well but compared to the hist historical averages that mega site at 640 uh, is still very cheap and so as a result overall the impact seems to be quite okay um the big uh you know movers on the announcement obviously pyrite and isogen it's going to be interesting to see what happens there next week and then we've got more fights that's also basically flat at its current range of 72,000 for the sellers, 69,000 for the buyers. Very, very expensive stuff as well. So the minerals, a uh, little bit of volatility, but really mainly in a couple of those that, uh, well, I, I would say definitely Isogen was lagging behind. Um, and then I would say Megasite's been lagging behind, but perhaps they're happy with the situation for Megasite, considering, of course, the gains that uh, some of the other minerals have already done. Let's move on to PI coming in at uh, 2350. So this one, whoops, like that could be interesting as well because uh, there will be some PI needed in the construction of larger ships. And from what I've seen, it's like really base materials like water and things like that. But that could have an impact on, for instance, coolants that need water in order to produce. So let's uh, let's just go over the list and see what's happening here. We do have the broadcast nodes. Oof, and that's a big jump here in... Uh, demand i'm gonna say in, in in the volumes that were traded my guess on this one is the announcement that there's going to be a change to um 
uh, number one uh, to uh, cloaky camping. And so I, I do think players are expecting a sort of a structure, an intelligence structure to be the counter to that, which will potentially require advanced PI materials. And then the second one, I think, is that you will need reactions for more production. And so that that may increase the amount of structures needed uh, for an alliance, for instance, to be able to build everything that they want. So uh, double speculation here, I would say, on uh, more structure needs in the future because of the change that were announced and so broadcast notes managed to make their way back to 1.7 million for the sellers 1.5 for the buyers and that's up here somewhere still not at its average this average should be almost 2 million isk but the interest is still there and so the gains that we've seen over the last three months or so um, are pretty much cemented at this point i do think they're here to stay uh, next up here we get construction blocks look at these volumes as well definitely uh, you know, speculation on more needs in the future. Uh, has the price moved though? Sellers, yeah, coming in at 10,000 disc, buyers at 6.6. Six. So now we have a reverse situation, more demand than supply. We haven't seen that in almost a year, I think, or more <laughs> for uh, construction blocks, but uh, it's pushing it back to the average 10K. Uh, that's interesting, that's interesting. How has the market decided on that? Um, I basically do think that uh, uh, here we get a little bit of speculation from these buyers that say if there's a metric for CCP to look at it's where it was about a year ago or so and that's around 10k and so that's the pro the uh, the potential uh, the minimum potential I think that they see as as a recovery and so anything that they can buy below that they can look that as a potential gain uh, especially if a rush in would then cause some a speculative jump up in price to, to something above that like 12k or something like that so um, all right first move here in the construction blocks big big volumes uh, I think it's going to be across the board then. Here is consumer electronics. Look at that volume. Very massive. 16,000 for the sellers, 6,500 for the buyers. Now that is a big margin uh, between sellers and buyers over double the price uh, almost three times in fact the price of the buyers that is crazy uh, but uh, this is this is exactly what i was talking about right uh, at the beginning um ccp made a big announcement big changes coming next month so that's very very soon and all of this is going to hit the game and there is a it's a mess right now i think everyone is, is or a lot of players are running around basically uh, like uh, 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 headless chickens uh, you know and uh, they're, they're all trying to uh, get their excel sheets and, and all of their charts and things like that up to date with trying to anticipate what these changes will mean exactly as you get a lot of speculation and it seems like big moves are being made in the pi market as a result and here we do have this i find this to be very fascinating it's that um we, we tend to, uh, so far at least, always see the response on one side. It's either the sellers or it's the buyers. And so that's, that's a bit of a surprise, right? If sellers decide, I'm not going to sell anything below 16,000 disc here anymore, and, and uh, speculators have been buying, 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 buying up to 16K, I don't understand that none of these guys say, hmm, you know what I could also do? Try to put up a buy order of 10,000 disc, right? Try to still grab some of that market from the players that are oblivious, that will see that buy order and just fill it right away. There, there is more market play to be had here than, than what I'm seeing personally, but um, it may be that it's just a little bit too soon and, and that all of it still has to uh, settle down, of course. Next up, we've got the coolants. All right, am I happy that I've been holding on to my productions? Look at that volume spike here as well, bringing uh, sellers back to 9K. So that's not a full recovery just yet, but uh, definitely a nice move up. 6.5 for the buyer still, so they are still lagging behind. Cryoprotectant solutions, that is interesting to me at least for the investment opportunity look at that one year low point for crowd detection solutions tied to implants um, I'm not sure. I mean, an implant set could come at, at one point. Maybe here it's disappointment. Uh, basically, that uh, CCP's full announcement is all about industry, uh, mining ships, then it's raw calls, then it's more stuff in Nolsec, counter to cloaky camping. None of it speaks to, eh, we're going to 
put uh, put out some some implants for for instance the uh, edencom ships and things like that although you know edencom ships are going down in uh, production needs and as a result should become cheaper as well and so a step after that, in my opinion, could be implants, but we will see. Uh, but that means that potentially we have an investment opportunity here, in my opinion. Less than 100,000 now for the sellers, less than 90,000 for the buyers. A big margin opening up here. The complete reversal of all of these others that have just jumped up in demand. And so supply still has to catch up for cryoprotectant solution. Way more supply than demand and a one-year low point. Seems like an, an, an opportunity to me personally. I think I'm going to try to grab some cheap cryoprotectant solutions. Enriched uranium volume spike, not too major, but definitely going up. I think I saw somewhere that, you know, more need for fuels are to be expected. 10.5 for the sellers, 8,000 for the buyers. Again, uh, yeah, it's suppliers that are lagging behind a little bit. I'll take a quick look. Yeah, it's, it's all in GTA 4.4 here. Integrity response drones, also a big volume spike and pushing us up towards 2 million on the chart. It's 2.2 for the sellers, 1.7 million for the buyers. I would say the first one that is back on a more normal average range for the sellers. So very, very, very interesting mechanical parts. Here is, I produced this by the way, big, big volume spike. And so we were totally down the gutter, 6 to 7K a couple of weeks ago. At least we're back to 8.5 and then down to 6.5. And now this is kind of interesting to me here as well. So the pattern that I'm seeing rather than trying a buy order uh, so that you can still grab some of that cheap mechanical parts, what's actually happening is some aggressive dumping. 10k, 9.7, 9,000, 8.8, 8.5 and here we get a little bit of competition starting. So uh, that's that's interesting how this plays out in the EVE Online market that we are pretty much always seeing a moves and speculative moves happening in either the sellers or the buyers so far. Then we've got nanites that's tied to implants. We do have a volume increase. Maybe it's got other uses as well. Uh, six nine for the sellers, five one for the buyers. Not not, not something I would uh, make a move on right now. Uh, nano factories a jump up as well. Still not a full recovery. I'd say we'd need to be above a million for that. We're at 900,000 for the sellers, 830 for the buyers. So the, the pattern is showing up, of course. PI um, has been influenced heavily by the announcement. Here's organic more applicators. And we actually have a uh, data point here at 1.1 million. Sellers are in fact at 1.3 million. Buyers are at a million. This is the first one where we do see uh, the buyers becoming more aggressive all of a sudden as well. And another full recovery, at least you could say, for organic mortar applicators. So that should really cement some of the others. And wasn't there uh, one or two that were like still, I think like the, the power cores or things like that. This one here, for instance, recursive computing model definitely had not recovered. Uh, um, that much from the bottom, right? Still sometimes playing with a million. We do have a volume increase and we are now selling at 1.5 million, 1.2 for the buyers. I'd still say not a full recovery, but we're definitely getting up there now. Robotics, hardly a big move in volume, slight move up in price. Sellers coming in at 86, all right. And then look at that, 95 coming into view here again as well. All of this is in the last 24 hours. It's, I think, that same pattern. Despite the fact that we hardly see it on the volumes, a lot of buying has happened, perhaps even up to 100K. And then now we have that aggressive selling that's already pushing back on the price. Yeah, you know, uh, this could definitely be happening here as well. I mean, I'm probably going to move some of my PI materials to trade hubs now as well and try to sell them at the best possible price. So we have these two forces that are fighting against each other. Those that are speculating on massive needs for the future and are basically it's trying to grab as much as they can, as cheaply as they can. But then we also have uh, those players that have been hoarding all everything that they've been producing for a while uh, that could cause uh, quite a bit of a glut all of a sudden, a lot of supply that'll put more pressure on the price. And that balance has to be found. It is chaos, it is a mess. And uh, some players will make a lot of money and some others will leave a lot on the table. Self-harmonizing power cores, volume spike, and actually back above average. Yeah, 2.7 million for the sellers, 1.7 for the buyers. So I actually have a little bit of speculative stuff that I bought as well in advanced PI, like in 
chunks of like 50 units, 100 units, nothing too major. Um, so I'm probably going to sell that at this point as well. Speculation seems to be at a high. Here is sterile condos. That's one I was talking about, right? We really had not recovered, stayed below 900,000 disc, but here it is 1.1 million for the sellers and above 1 million for the buyers as well, back practically at its average point. You call me superconductors, tied to uh, implants and that one is still basically flat where are those buyers 61k i don't know i was hoping below 50 it doesn't seem to be happening and then finally the wetwear mainframes that's a nice volume spike as well uh, we'd need to be above 2 million for a full recovery we're just above that and then 1.7 for the buyers a more normal margin as well uh, so here is the recovery for advanced PI materials this week and uh, all of that basically happening in pretty much the last 24 hours as SSB made that big announcement. That is very interesting as well to see now how ISK is starting to flow right back into uh, the PI market and it's having a pretty big damn impact. Next up advanced moon materials coming in at 35.35, 35.40. Like that. Um, here, I basically don't have enough information to know if changes that were announced would have an impact. So let's just go over these crystalline carbonite for Galente production. Basically, at a high point, uh, 167 for the sellers, 161 for the buyers. But we're not seeing a volume response. We're not seeing. I'm not seeing anything out of line on the volatility that we've seen building over the last two months or so. So I'm going to say that this is just. The regular market action at the moment probably uh, slightly tied to uh, the rebalance of the marauder still that is probably absorbing a lot of that uh, tech 2 uh, production uh, material uh, that um, that's just available you know we need more more marauders and uh, as a result that's putting pressure on the price to go up after that, we have the non, no, not with the materials. We have the titanium carbide for Caldari. Also continued volatility. Uh, a second spike up to 250 almost. We're at 235 for the sellers, 200 disc for the buyers. So very expensive titanium carbide. Very nice moves here for speculation. But again, I'm not seeing this as part of uh, a fallout from the dev block, from the announcement. This to me seems to be uh, still previous changes that uh, have their impact on the market. And uh, if the next two are still basically a little bit more flat, uh, the Minmetar one I think may have moved a little bit. So here is Fernite Carbide. Yeah, that one moved uh, like uh, about a month ago up to 200. So we have that second spike that's a little bit less, but it's still doing really well. 170 for the sellers, 163 for the buyers. So that's definitely, uh, you know, again, a move up above average but nothing outlandish especially looking at the volumes but then this one should be a little bit more flat and that one is still climbing that's interesting tungsten carbide um, is going up at almost 200 disc for the sellers 226 very quickly and then 181 for the buyers so um, i you know, let me know in the comments if any of you guys know about changes to Tech 2 uh, production that we can expect from that dev block or from that uh, Excel sheet that the CCP gave us. Uh, but otherwise, I mean, this is of course a pattern that we've seen started here in March, which I think was the rebalance of the Marauders. And so it's basically there's more need for this stuff because of uh, players wanting more Marauders. It is like one of the biggest Tech 2 uh, ships that you can make. There's a couple of transport ship exceptions, but for the combat ships, it definitely is. And as a result, um, you know, all of them are seeing more volatility or just massive gains like here for tungsten carbide. Then we've got the meta materials. Let's take a look at those. Um, Photonic metamaterials still seeing a little bit of pressure here. That's definitely not too hot. Less than 12k for the sellers, 11.6 for the buyers. I would say that's under pressure and uh, still trading below average. Then we have non-linear metamaterials for Kaldari. That's a nice little speculative boom up to 35,000 disc. We're recovering from that. So we're talking 25 for the sellers, 23 for the buyers. And I'm actually going to drink <coughs> for just a moment. There we go. So uh, this is that typical Kaldari volatility, I would say. I'm still not seeing... 
enough of a volume move to say this is tied to what happened or was announced yesterday. Then we have Minmetar is plasmonic metamaterials, also flat at 20k, just around its average, 19.2 for the sellers, 18.4 for the buyers, maybe a touch below that. And then terahertz metamaterials also flat a little bit below average. So, all right, here uh, we still have basically the fallout from changes to some take two ships that are being digested by the market, mostly in the carbide section. Fermionic condensates also flat here for the week. I, I think that's going to be a trend, right? We also hear ferrogel, a little bit of. Um, a recovery but constantly being plugged back down by um, the uh, by fresh supply and then here despite the volume increase we're actually pretty flat on the week I, I basically think this is uh, for now going to be a little bit of a forgotten market unfortunately if you're looking for speculation I don't think it's gonna happen in this segment and as a result I, I'm expecting a little bit more stability here all of a sudden for instance, Fuller Rides also still flat above 750. Hypersynaptic fibers clearly landing on an average range after that one spike. And for now, also pretty flat. Nano transistors, slight move down, but nothing too special. Phenolic composites. This one uh, did just speculate its way up to 2K a couple of times. Full recovery. That was quite a lot, but you can also see how quickly supply comes in. So that one is basically still moving its way down. 1600 for the sellers, 1526 for the buyers uh, back to a below average as i've said my expectation by next week will start to flatten this out and then will probably stabilize for now and then ceramic fibers the one exception that has managed to get to one year high point and is still holding on to those gains over five uh, 490 for the sellers and 461 for the buyers that's pretty a pretty impressive exception uh, where you could have made quite a bit of risk here last month on that increase in price Next up, take two ships. Let's go take a look at these 4130. Like that. All right, let's see if there's interesting stuff here. Is a basilisk jump. All right, good to see. Uh, it is pretty typical, right? We've seen that in the last couple of months, Kaldari. Uh, Kaldari ships head and shoulders above the rest when it comes to volatility and here yeah, you could have probably bought like at 190-ish uh, about 10 days ago, 2 weeks ago or so and we are now selling at 215, buyers coming in at 207 and in fact we're already recovering, we probably went to 220 uh, and even 230 at one point. So nice little spike here yet again, uh, we're a couple days late but there's definitely some trading to be done here. Then we've got a Cerberus big volume spike and another one back up to 280 that's lovely right this is the nice volatile behavior just about 10 days ago again you could have bought these probably for 210 to 15 something like that and we're now selling at 264 buyers are up to 230 and kaldari volatility uh, very very nice for traders of course then we get an Amar ship that has basically stabilized back at around 200 million. Is a bit of pressure at the end here. 198 for the sellers, 180 for the buyers. And yeah, Amar not really seeing enough volatility there. Unfortunately, then the Hound is uh, back at that 25 million. Also lacking some volatility, I would say. Almost 26 for the sellers, 22 for the buyers. That's really not enough to make a move on, in my opinion. Iki Tursa for our Triglavian overlords potentially um, still flat at a very high price point 772 for the sellers and almost 700 million for the buyers here i think basically this market is so small and in order to get stuff moving uh, you know it has to come from triglave in space which takes quite a little bit of time it's gonna take a little bit of time to absorb the announcement that well they ought to become cheaper uh, i think uh, trick and eden come stuff uh, was going down a little bit in needs May was it for the tricks? I'm not really sure uh, if it was actually for the tricks. At least for Eden come, we do know that. Uh, but yeah, my expectation is still a decline in price eventually, just because more and more players are finding their way probably towards having positive standings with both Edencom and the Triglavians, and that as a result, uh, we should see more and more supply slowly find its way to Cheetah. 
for now though still super expensive then we've got the ishtar making its way back to 230 back on a normal price i would say 227 for the sellers 208 for the buyers is this well if you can buy below 200 and then sell at 230 you do have a bit of a trade here um, but uh, it's kind of interesting. We'll see if uh, what the actual uh, reason for this is. Perhaps it's the announcement that uh, ISK rewards will go up for ratting. The Ishtar is still a, an interesting drone ship, I think, to do that in. And as a result, yeah, we're back on a normal average price here, which we haven't seen in a while. Could also be the impact of the... Uh, uh, of these actually going back up in price and actually now staying at an above average range for a bit. Then we have the Manticore. So a couple of months ago we had a nice uh, boom here from 20 million up to 35. Speculation is still happening but at the moment we're basically on the downtrend. So I'd be on the lookout for the bottom. 27.8 for the sellers, less than 25 million for the buyers. Yeah, maybe we can go lower though. We've seen that before. So I'd, I'd have a little bit of, of patience in the Manticore market. Then the Munin that's just quickly stabilizing at 200 million and buyers are there as well interesting so maybe if you bought really at the very bottom price range you can make a little bit of risk on this one uh, but unfortunately yeah, min matar amar lacking a bit in volatility in the last couple of months nemesis landing on 22.5 question is where are those buyers 21 ah, still a little bit higher but we need to just get rid of one two three four of them and we're below 20 million that's where i would consider trying to grab a uh, nemesis i mean these guys are pretty aggressive though 26 units 20 units maybe it can happen but uh we also don't see the big numbers here just no not in the last 24 hours don't think it's gonna happen if you want to make your move on the nemesis i wouldn't blame you but i'd just basically do it with maybe one or two ships or so not more than that oniros manages to hold on to a 190 million range 172 for the buyers yeah small volumes be careful is always the name of the game here and then the panther making its way up to 1.2 billion on the charts 1.25 for the sellers 114 for the buyers here and i think that this is that uh, production cost increase that's starting to show up and that is this fallout from the marauders gaining in popularity more stuff happening there i think uh, is generally pushing up the price of tech 2 production and as a result the biggest ones so the battleships are definitely in the front line for uh, for price adjustments purifier all right an amar one with a bit of volatility that is good news i would say we went below 25 million i think you could have bought for 23 we're now selling at 30 million isk bars up to 27 so that's good a sell opportunity in the purifier I actually have some Hmm, maybe I should look into that. <laughs> then we've got the scimitar that's uh, going back down, unfortunately. 50 a day. Uh, 188 for the sellers, 173 for the buyers. 173, that's pretty damn low. So you could you could consider buying one, but it's that same warning. I would never buy more than one at a time. And then Dobido, yeah, confirming that pressure. That's really cool. Up to 1.3 billion, one year high point on the chart. 1.4 for the sellers, almost 1.2 billion for the buyers. And then we've got the zealot that's still down the trenches. 183 for the sellers, 171 for the buyers. So it's interesting. I do think that eventually uh, it's going to start to come across the board but this week i do think that the battleships are kind of uh, confirming that the marauder demand is there to stay um, and uh, that as a result uh, there's more need for these materials and unless supplies start to go up we should see upwards pressure in the tech 2 ship market next up the tech 3 ship market coming in at 48.25 so the last couple of weeks have been very stable in the destroyers below 60 million uh, below 50 million range just like that and pretty flat let's see if it continues or if the announcement may have pushed some players into that destroyer market 47.3 million for the sellers of the confessor 43 million for the buyers and then new supplies couple of sellers lost 24 hours nothing outlandish in the volumes not spotting any problems we're still 
pretty stable. Hecate kind of confirming the trend, a little bit of pressure, for, but still 47 for the sellers, 40 for the buyers. And what's that pressure? Well, look at that in the last 48 hours, a full page. But the good news is we don't see 100, 200 Hecates in a single sell order. All of this is consistent and steady enough that sure, it puts a bit of pressure on the price, but this is completely fine and easily absorbed by the market. Jackdaw is uh, yeah, all right, going back down to a little bit less than 45 million now, 44.8 for the sellers. And yeah, that's also that normal response. I mean, you can try to disguise it uh, through five sell orders, but it's pretty obvious that this is one player bringing um, 70, 70, 140, almost 200 uh, Jackdaws uh, to the market in one go. That is going to put some pressure on the price. 40 million for the buyers. Where are those other buyers at here? 43, 40 as well, 40 as well. I would say, all right, slight hint at slight oversupply. I would not overreact just yet. I would need to see buyers well below 40 million before I say, all right, let's 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 try to maybe grab a couple of cheap jackdaws. But uh, it's not there yet, I don't think. This can still turn around pretty quickly. And then we get this Vapel, that's basically flat as well. 46 million for the sellers, 44 for the buyers. Last 24 hours, all right, half a page, 25, 15, 15, and then 17 here. It's a lot for the least popular one, but it is not a crazy amount either. So the message for this week is the first, first telltale signs that perhaps some oversupply is building into the system, which could eventually create a buy opportunity, but it's definitely too early uh, to jump in at this point. After that, we've got our cruisers, where the Legion is continuing its speculative run back up to 230 million and recovering already back down to 183 uh, buyers at 166 uh, here. Yeah, I don't have a good reason or anything like that, just that it's basically a small enough market that this can happen. <laughs> and so the Legion just had a sell opportunity uh, one, two, three, probably four or five days ago. Uh, we're too late, unfortunately. Then we've got the Loki. Completely different chart here, flat at a pretty decent price, 180 for the sellers, 160 for 165 for the buyers. Uh, it's probably the 100 units here that are keeping things a little bit more stable. Um, but yeah, Legion, this is the chart. Loki, this is the chart. It's so different, very difficult to really know what's happening here. Then the Proteus coming from volatility for the least popular one is now stabilizing at 165. 150 for the buyers, that's nothing too special either. And then the Tengu, completely different again. Quite a bit of speculation. Went to one year high point about a month ago and is currently actually crashing down quite heavily. 174 for the sellers, 160 for the buyers. So uh, that uh, cruiser market market right here in the destroyers we can read that mark a little bit we can try to speculate uh, on on what's happening seeing some trends and then trying to jump in at the right time for the cruiser markets it's so all over the place that that to me is completely impossible uh, the decline in the tango if it has enough momentum and uh, then uh, we could maybe look for for an opportunity there but yeah looking at this chart look at this range as well 200 million down to probably a 135 million range and then for the legion now 230 million and a low at 130 million this is this is such a crazy range that saying all right the tango is down we should buy it's it's impossible for me to say something like that but that's uh, yeah that's the situation here uh, in these uh, cruiser markets volatility in the tengu and the legion and then stability in the loki and the proteus for now i would say that leaves us the uh, to the extra product coming in at 53 minutes and yeah, I'm gonna take a look at the mining ships. So ships, uh, mining barges first of all, and then we'll add in the Orca. I don't think I can really do the Rorcal. We'll start with take one. So here are the mining barges. The Coveter, uh, definitely look at that. An interest in the Coveters that has gone up. Uh, yesterday nice little volume spike but the response on the price non-existent 40 million for the sellers 37 38 million for the buyers it's that same range as an alpha injector i would say yeah that's a pretty good one for a newer player to shoot for 
Then we've got the Procurer that also has a volume spike, but again, no price response. 34 for the sellers, 29 for the buyers. That feels reasonable. And then a ship that I have flown for a very long time here is the Retriever um, that doesn't show a volume spike and is basically still selling for just below 40 million. 39 for the sellers, 35 for the buyers. These have stabilized substantially, obviously becoming more expensive over the last year as minerals have become more expensive but we're not seeing too much of a move on the announcement just yet although clearly a couple of volume spikes have just happened here as well next up we've got the tick two i'll start with the skiff uh, that's a price response all of a sudden interesting and look at that basically a little bit of a depressed skiff market um over the last year or so um currently 244 Buyers coming in at 211, and then here about a month ago we were trading for 190-ish. So that's pretty big move, 25% up uh, right here, and uh, not even on big volumes. I do think what's happening here is that's the impact, right? The Rokal was mentioned, the capital mining ships were mentioned, and then of course your alternative is a skiff, a machina, a hulk, a tech 2 one if you want to get into that top tier potentially uh, if you do expect a big nerf to the Rorcal and the Orca mining capabilities. Next up we've got the machina, yeah, that one has been going up for a while um, and is currently I'd say slightly above average, 240 for the sellers, 216 for the buyers and then finally we've got the hulk that also had a little bit of a speculative jump up here man that's all over the place in fact with the 360 up here it's currently at 280 for the sellers and 265 million for the buyers so that's okay interesting some upwards pressure on the take two mining ships for sure i do think that's going to now uh, stick basically because of uh, what may be happening down the line for the larger uh, mining ships and that will leave us I mean I'll take a quick look recall uh, like this and then we'll do this to see if anything is happening here so 10 jumps away we have some for sale at 3 billion isk buyers coming in at 2.2 billion isk of course volume wise this doesn't move a lot and there's basically very expensive uh, at almost 3 billion up f uh, yeah 50% over the last year or so. Um, so that's interesting. Oh man, that reminds me uh, the Tech 2 mining ships uh, in general, maybe up in price as well on the, on the uh, Marauder change, as their products have gone up in price as well. So, Rorcal, still very expensive. Uh, I think we basically are not in the right spot to try and gauge uh, an impact on that market and then we've got the orca next which is right here now that is nice around 50 a day flat at 1 billion isk pretty much right 1.2 billion for the sellers just above a billion for the buyers 1.1 okay a little bit of both so that looks quite all right we do see some volumes decreasing uh, and that is going to be interesting of course for now and this full chart is basically the impact of the mineral price index minerals becoming more expensive orca is a big ship requires a lot of minerals and as a result uh, that's uh, the reason that this price has increased but of course now we'll have to see what ccp actually announces for um potential changes to these mining ships so i'm i'm again going to say this this is my opinion of course uh, and uh, i'm probably a little bit biased because i love my orca i love mining in my orca flying in my orca it's become a little bit of my base of operations uh, i i think it's as it is now, it's actually a very nice end game goal for those high sec players, for those solo players. Uh, it's it's by far one of the biggest ships that you can make yourself, that you can shoot for. Uh, it brings that extra utility without, in my opinion, uh, you know, eclipsing any of the other mining barges uh, in yield either. So I would say the Orca. Um, Hopefully uh, it won't change too much and it will still have that option to be that solo player's base of operation. I love it uh, for that and uh, in fact I still remember that uh, back in the day when a couple of other friends were playing EVE Online. Uh, this was something that we actually did as an adventure there. We all decided, you know what we're going to do? We're going to make, earn our own Orcas, all four of us, of us. then we're going to load them up 
with some uh, still bombers and a couple of uh, exploration ships, whatever we want to bring. And then we're going to move as a pack of Orcas uh, into Khanid space is where we went. And then we basically live there for a couple of weeks exploring that space around from the Orcas that we had built ourselves. It was a very cool adventure uh, that uh, we managed to do. And this really is a ship that, in my opinion, is in a great spot uh, to uh, to set that kind of a goal that'll that'll keep you hooked for enough time it's not crazy difficult either but it's got all of that utility so um yeah it's we, we will see uh we can't of course uh, speculate right now exactly on what ccp is planning for the capital mining ships but changes have been announced and are on the horizon so that's going to be it for this if talk guys thank you very much for watching and as always i'll see you next time